Welcome to The Cabral Concept, where board-certified doctor of naturopathy, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares with you exactly how you can reverse aging, take back your health, and live a life full of energy and passion with new 20-minute episodes every single day to keep you healthy and engaged. Now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. All right, everybody, we are back. Brand new Cabral Concept. We're here today with episode 2868 of the show. Today, we're going to be talking about the five coffee boosters to supercharge your body, your mind, and your performance. So I have five specialty add-ons here today. One for improving overall energy, but healthy levels of energy. Another one for mineral-based balance, a specific one for antioxidants and balance within Ayurvedic-based herbs. We've got an especially one for a mushroom based blend and I talk about three different forms of mushrooms specifically and then we have one for blood sugar balancing. So if you're someone that loves coffee and you want to make it even a little healthier, you can add in just a little bit of extras on a daily basis. They're inexpensive, they're easy to use and most people may already have them. So let's get right into it today. The first one that I wanted to share with you actually dates back to when I first started to do sprint triathlons. So when I ever get into something, I love the research behind it. I love the technical aspect. I love the gear. I love the supplementation, all those different things. And so when I would look at triathletes, even though I wasn't doing Ironman or anything like that, I would say, what are the specific fuels that a lot of triathletes would use or maybe endurance athletes would use in order to fuel their body without causing a lot of digestive base? upset. And there was all these gels and there was all sorts of different things. And I just didn't love the the super processed nature to it. But what some people did, and it was actually based on really good research and still is here today, they would say, how do I increase the uptake of anything? So when I started to look at this, I said, oh, this actually does work with creatine. It works with a lot of other supplements or nutrients in the body. So I just want to share that with you here today. One of the best ways to better uptake fuel for the body during a triathlon is actually with salt, sugar, and caffeine. And so you might say to yourself, well, that doesn't sound very healthy. Well, you can use sea salt. Right, So you can use a Redmond's Real Salt or a Celtic Salt or a clean version of Himalayan salt. So we can, we can get healthy forms. All right, so we have sea salt now, or your favorite electrolyte, right? Now the next one is being able to get some type of caffeine. Well, there's your coffee, right? Whether you want it as iced coffee or with a lot of these gels, obviously they just add caffeine to it or hot coffee. Now, you don't have to be running a triathlon. I'm just talking about sitting down at your desk for the day or maybe taking it on the road. You can add a pinch of sea salt to taste. You can have your regular coffee. That's the caffeine. Don't overdo the caffeine. But if you don't have anxiety, you don't have blood sugar spikes with it, um, you don't have any uh, anxiety, panic attacks, et cetera, you might be too fine with 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine a day. You know, again, like that's just because coffee doesn't work for some people doesn't mean it can't work for others, right? Okay, and the last part is the glucose. So now, believe it or not, your body will better absorb fluid water into the cells if there is some type of electrolytes and or glucose. It, it actually just helps with the uptake because if you're someone that has normal blood sugar or maybe even a little bit low, your body does much better at l- water absorption into the cells and tissues with a little bit of glucose. So this is just number one. This one might not work for you, but I'll tell you as a pre-workout, a natural pre-workout, just having a, um, a coffee with a little bit of sea salt and maybe like a teaspoon of maple syrup or raw honey uh, could be a, the perfect fuel for you at a much less expensive cost. So just something to think about. There's a lot of different ways to be able to manipulate this and use it for a healthier version. All right, so number two is this adding trace minerals to your coffee. So I want to share with you, I recently switched over from a water filter that I used to use all the time. Now it didn't, doesn't, and I never disparage any human being or company on the podcast. I've done 2,868 shows. I haven't done it yet and I won't do it in the future. So I won't say the company that I switched from, but what I did decide to do from my two daughters, from my wife, my family, my new dog, is that we're just going to use the cleanest, 
purest water possible. So we're just gonna use a reverse osmosis filter. Right now, we have a tabletop one, so it just goes on our countertop. In the future, I do think that we'll do a whole house filter so that we don't have to have separate shower filters, bath filters, etc. But anyway, that's down the road. And so, we have the reverse osmosis filter, but it does take out a lot of the, the great minerals. Now, I have a bottle of um, mineral water, so it's just regular flat spring water by Mountain Valley. It's an amazing company. There are minerals in this. There's no doubt about it. So, But what if you are using reverse osmosis? Because the, the truth is that we had a lot of plastic bottles too, like Icelandic sometimes we would have for spring water if we couldn't get always the Mountain Valley, and I didn't want to use all that plastic. And also, when it's being shipped from place to place, there's also the carbon and there's also the heat heating of the plastic than the B potential BPAs or other plastics going into the water. So I said, you know what? Gonna reduce waste as much as humanly possible. We can only do our part, that's it. And so reverse osmosis, but it takes a lot of the minerals. So we add back in the trace minerals now. Now, if you do that with coffee though, you're also, whether you're taking out your, um, whether you're using reverse osmosis water or not, if you add in just a little bit, we're talking about four drops, four drops to eight drops maximum of trace minerals. That doesn't mean really even electrolytes. Yeah, you'll get some magnesium, you'll get other things in there, but it's 72 minerals that you would get from like a sea salt or something like that can make a huge difference, but they make trace mineral drops. So I believe it's called Ancient Minerals. They're one of the companies that, that does a lot of these trace mineral drops, but there are more companies out there. So I'm not here to promote a particular company to you today, but adding those minerals to your coffee, because caffeine can strip you of minerals. I mean, that, that's the truth as well. Like it really can. Now, not to massive degree, Degrees, but it can. And so just adding a little trace minerals back in, whether it's to the water you make your coffee with or to the coffee itself, you're going to be good to go. So that's a great one. I wanted to share that with you. That's something I do myself. And uh, I actually have my, I've decaf coffee, so no caffeine in this right now, but I have the, the Ecolife mug right here, which is just kind of a fun cork uh, bottom mug if you're watching this on video. So um, that's that. And if you like the taste of coffee, then you can do a, a, a Swiss water processed decaf. No caffeine, but you can still get all the antioxidants from the coffee too. Okay. So that leads me to my next point, which is a powerful, natural, uh, anti-inflammatory to balance healthy levels of inflammation, of course, and then antioxidants, so high antioxidants. So how do you get high antioxidants from nature? Well, it's fruits and vegetables or spices. So what, is, what does Ayurveda talk about in terms of spices to improve tea or coffee? Here they are, cardamom, nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon. There are others People sometimes add, add in ashwagandha. They'll sometimes add in brahmi. They'll sometimes add in, uh, I don't think Tulsi is the best one to add in, honestly, flavor-wise, but um, uh, a few others would be licorice. I'm not a huge licorice flavor person, but you could add in a little bit of that for the adrenals as well. Uh, Guduchi is another one from Ayurveda, but the, the typical ones, the ones that you might already have in your spice cabinet, cardamom, nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon, Huge fan of those. Powerful antioxidants. Going to talk with about number five. I'll be using one of those specifically. But the truth is this is that adding those, unless you have high histamine levels, it's a great thing to do. Like, so no matter what coffee you're making right now, whether you're adding the trace minerals or that little bit of glucose or whatever it is, it's a great thing to be able to add. And I think it tastes delicious. So a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cloves, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of cardamom. It almost makes it like your own chai spice. If you mix in just a little bit, you know, if I add any milk, let's say I add some mac nut milk or coconut milk or whatever to my coffee, I'm talking about maybe a tablespoon to two tablespoons maximum. And if you want to blend that up, it makes it or use a little whisk, uh, it makes a nice little coffee. Now you mix that with a little bit of these spices, it's phenomenal. Like it tastes delicious. So that's why for me, I can have a decaf coffee if I want in the afternoon and actually get a lot of these antioxidants in. And I'm going to link up a couple shows here today. So I'm going to link up a show as well that I did on adding the, um, one of the most powerful things for creating brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, which is simply raw, unprocessed, 100% cacao. It's not chocolate, not a chocolate bar. Yes, it comes from cacao beans, totally different and amazing for cognitive ability. And these things are inexpensive and they're delicious. So you make your own natural mocha. I'm going to link up that show as well for you. All right. So they'll all be at stephencabral.com slash 2868. All right. Number four, is a mushroom blend. Now, 
Um, I have a whole show, uh, I have a couple shows on mushrooms and adding mushroom blends. I'll link those up as well today. But you know, even before mushroom coffee was popular, people were still adding these mushroom capsules to their coffee. That's actually how mushroom coffee basically started, right? It started with regular coffee, uh, into coffee with uh, mushroom putter in there as well. And now people are just doing mushroom only and there's all sorts of different things. Great, no problem at all. But what I wanted to do was share with you, there are three different drinks that I sometimes make. I don't do this too often, so I wanna be honest with you, but you can do if it speaks to you, right? So hundreds of companies now that make all sorts of different mushroom blends and many of them are fantastic. So there we have it. Just make sure that they're tested for heavy metals because mushrooms are a key later of metals from soil in the environment. Like mushrooms literally clean up the environment. So just be careful that you're not then consuming the, the mushroom, the fungi that literally cleans our earth, okay? So just be careful on that. Just make sure there's no lead and no uh, particular heavy metals, arsenic, et cetera. Uh, although arsenic is not a big one for mushrooms to pick up, but I digress. All right, so here's one. If you wanna boost cognitive function, Lion's Mane is a great one to add to your coffee. Now, you can get a Lion's Mane packet or you can get Lion's Mane capsules or powder and just add the right amount to you for your coffee. All right, so just start a small amount, mix it up. It doesn't mix great, but it's not bad. And you can, again, use the double whisker. I, I, can, mix, I can link up the whisker that we use as well uh, on today's podcast. Okay, the next one, for the immune system, Although I love reishi, and I've mentioned reishi in the past, I love, lion, I love turkey tail. I just mentioned lion's mane for the brain, turkey tail for the immune system. Okay, maitake, shiitake, reishi, okay, all those are great, but turkey tail for the immune system, because I've been doing a lot of anti-cancer-based research, one of my favorites, all right? Uh, I've gotten different types of turkey tail powder just to try it out. It's, it's tough to mix. That's the only thing. So try to find a company that also micronizes it, and that would be phenomenal. All right, the last one is for energy and endurance. So uh, again, lion's mane, cognitive, turkey tail, immune. Now for energy and endurance, chaga and cordyceps. You can use either, but if you can find them combined, even better uh, for overall energy endurance as well. So what I would say to you, the only caveat on these mushroom blends, make sure that they're heavy metal free and that they mix easily in your coffee. All right, number five is better balancing glucose when consuming coffee, especially caffeinated coffee. I, I did a, a podcast years ago that ended up being super controversial. I don't know how it was, but it was, right? Because it, it went against the grain. But I said, when some people drink coffee with nothing in it and they're fasted, it breaks their fast. And people are like, that's not true, that can't happen, it's zero calories, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, all right, again, like I'm not here to argue. <laughs> like that's, we're here to help, like as podcasters and health practitioners, we're here to help people. What I said to people is, this is based on real data, real science. For some people, when they drink caffeine, it spikes their norepinephrine, an excitatory neurotransmitter produced also by the adrenals, and cortisol, which is a glucocorticoid produced by the cortex, uh, of the adrenals and cortex, and that breaks down stored glucose in the liver and or muscle tissue. So yeah, you might start before your coffee at a 78 and 85 for blood sugar, balanced blood sugar, but when you have your coffee, you go up to 109, 118, and so you see that you brought sugar into your bloodstream without you consuming any glucose in your coffee. And that's why I just share with people, like we have to understand is that when, when the body gets stressed and in fight or flight, you, if you're, inhib if you're doing that yourself with through caffeine or from another stress, it does break your technically your fasted state, even though there's no calories to consume, what it is doing is breaking down stored sugar, bringing that sugar to your bloodstream. Now you can look at that however you want, but it still is exactly what happens during a fight or flight based pattern. 
So what can we do though to better balance blood sugar if you might be in more of that camp? One is we can do less caffeine. That's for sure. No doubt about it. And I have a whole podcast again on how to wean off caffeine or at least wean down. And I'll try to link that up for you as well today. So the next thing you can do, and one of the most fun things I think, is especially if you have hot coffee, it won't work with cold, with iced coffee, but get cinnamon sticks, organic cinnamon sticks. And you actually just put it in the coffee you pour the boiling water, the hot water in, and it starts to break off some of that cinnamon. And you can use the cinnamon stick as a stir. And what it will do is the cinnamon then will be infused with your coffee and it can better help balance blood sugar levels because cinnamon is actually very impressive with balancing blood sugar. Now, the other thing you can do is you could take something like an L-theanine powder or even maybe a little bit of magnesium, and you can mix that with a coffee too. Because I'm talking about not taking any capsules. We're just talking about add-ins to your coffee here today. So like an adrenal soothe would work, a daily glucose support would work, but I'm talking about just some powders to add in. So L-theanine is the same thing in green tea, which doesn't allow for that large spike of cortisol or stress when consumed with caffeine. So hopefully these were helpful here today. There's basically five specific ones. Maybe one you want to try out a couple days a week, see if it works for you. If you have any others, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. And for all the previous podcasts, all the research, all the links, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2868 for all the details. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow talking more on the Cabral concept. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.